In this entrepreneurship video, I'll discuss how to set up a business, and we're starting right now. Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Keystone Financial Academy. My name is Elliot, and if you're new to this channel, I invite you to join the community by subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. New Year's resolutions bring a lot of promises that you make to yourself. I'm gonna hit that gym, I'm gonna follow that diet, or I'll be better at saving money. Among the resolutions that I often hear is that I'm going to start up my own business. That is a very good idea, and one that I think should rank at the top of everyone's list. Although I talk a lot about investing and finance on this channel, I've also started up a number of businesses over the years, mostly consulting firms, with the latest being Keystone Financial Academy. So in this video, I'd like to share with you some of my harder knowledge about the benefits of having a business and how to initially set it up. The first thing very much worth mentioning is how important small businesses are and how much they really are the backbone of the US economy. The Small Business Administration, or the SBA, defines a small business as any company that's under 500 employees. Now that's an admittedly large organization, but that's the metric that the SBA chose. So going by that measure, an amazing 99% of all the companies in the United States fall under the small business category. And by the latest count, there are over 30 million such companies. Now out of those 30 million, 22 million are individually operated, meaning they only have one owner and no employees. And with over half of those being home-based. So that is a lot of Americans that have started up and run small businesses. So what exactly are the advantages of having a small business? Well, the most obvious one is that you have a chance to work for yourself and be your own boss. Now that comes with a few pluses, such as no one telling you to show up to work, but also a few minuses, such as no one pays you if the business fails to generate a profit. This of course brings us to the second major advantage of having your own business, and that is the fact that your earnings are only limited by your own talents and abilities and ambition. Your own small business is just that, your own, and you can grow it and work on it without anyone overseeing you or directing you. The third advantage of having a small business has to do with the generous tax laws that favor such businesses here in the United States. As a small business entrepreneur, you get to deduct virtually all of your business related expenses and you can even declare a loss for the first three years of your operations as you get things going. Now this is all fine and good, but the truth is most people don't just quit their job and jump head first into starting up a small business. Most would-be entrepreneurs actually have a full-time job that is their main money making gig as they start up their new business. And I for one am a big advocate of starting a new business part time. In fact, many household names in the tech world such as Apple, Facebook, Amazon and Google were all started up part time. And their founders worked on evenings and weekends often in the garage or in a dorm room. So now let's talk business ideas. On the most fundamental level, how do you decide what to pursue? Well here you really only need two things. First you have to create a product or service that is needed by society. And second, you have to find and attract customers that will pay for it. That's really the magic formula, product or service plus customers equals business. Now how do you find the product or service that has a chance of being successful in the business marketplace? While it may not be easy, it's actually quite straightforward. You have to recognize people's needs and figure out how you can create something of value for them. If you fill that need with a product or service and it brings value to someone, they will pay you for it. And the more value you bring and the more people people you bring that value to, the more you'll get paid. In fact, everything I just mentioned underscores a really important concept in entrepreneurship. Do not chase money by saying, well, what can I do to make as much as I can? Instead, ask yourself, what can I do to bring the most value to the most amount of people? Then execute that idea and the money will follow. Now you may look around and see that just about every need has been filled, but that's okay because it's not something new and innovative that you're necessarily going after. And in fact, it may be a tough sell if the product or service is radically new. Instead, you can improve on something and make it better, faster, cheaper, or easier to understand. And if the market for this product or service isn't too crowded already, you likely make an impact with your version of it. In my case, I saw the need for practical and easy to understand financial education and created this channel and the accompanying textbook and courses. The market wasn't overflowing with these specific services and the customers found and brought value 
value to them, so my products and services began to slowly take off. Now at this point, it's important to mention that it's not enough to just come up with an idea, but you need to come up with a way to monetize it. The key word here is monetize. There are plenty of ideas floating around, but unless you can figure out a way how to monetize or make money from this idea, it's just that, an idea, not a business. Another thing that you want to think about is how to make the business scalable so it can grow after you initially establish it. And finally, a worthy goal to strive for is to make parts of your business passive in nature, meaning you put in a lot of work up front, but the sales of your product or service will be self-sustaining and will require far less input from you down the road. Okay, so let's say you found an idea that fills a customer's need and you think you can monetize it and then turn it into a business. The next step is to write down what you think you need to do in the form of a business plan. Now, contrary to popular belief, a business plan does not have to be the size of a college term paper. You can and should write this all out on just one or two sheets of paper, listing out an overview of your product or service and how it will bring value to your customers, followed by a short market analysis of your competitors, and then you plan to monetize the business, including marketing and advertising. This is all you really need in the beginning. You just want to organize your thoughts and create a roadmap for yourself to follow. The next thing you want to do is decide how you want to structure your business and file the proper paperwork to make this happen. Now there are a few possibilities here. The simplest form of business is a sole proprietorship or SP. This structure is great for low risk businesses that are not likely to be sued and is very easy to set up and dismantle. Keep in mind however that a sole proprietorship is the same as you and there is no legal distinction between the personal and the business. To form an SP you just choose a business name, file a fictitious business name statement with a county recorder and get an employer identification number from the IRS and that's really it. A step up from the sole proprietorship is the limited liability corporation or the LLC. Here your business is strictly separated from your personal assets which gives you significant legal protection in cases of liability. However it costs much more time and money to set up an LLC and involves choosing a business name, filing articles of incorporation, establishing a registered agent, creating an operating agreement and paying some hefty fees for all of the above which can total up to about a thousand bucks in most states. Finally a step up from the LLC is the C Corp and this is how all the big names are structured. Now typically you do not form a C Corp right out of the gate. It's something a small business grows into so I'm not going to get into the details here. The vast majority of small businesses are in fact sole proprietorships or LLCs. Now once you've structured your company you're not done quite yet. You then need to open a business bank account and think about various aspects of your company's public profile. You will need a business address to receive mail and this can just be a rented post office box. You will certainly need a business phone number, preferably a toll free 1-800 number which you can easily set up with a number of companies online. And finally you will need a website and a business email to advertise your product or service. All this is just a minimum to get going. If you really want to stand out you will need to think about branding including creating a logo, business cards and a comprehensive social media presence. It's also important to build up a team of professionals that you can rely on for assistance if and when you need them. For example, if you've always used off-the-shelf tax preparation software, this might be the right time to find a good business accountant. Small business taxes can be more complex than personal ones, and a skilled accountant can suggest strategies and deductions that are unique to your business. You may also want to hang on to the name of a business law attorney just in case you have some legal issues to navigate. Finally, if your business is heavily rely on technology, this would be a good time to find skilled computer repair and other IT experts just in case. The same goes for e-commerce and web design professionals, especially if your business depends on selling something online. So yes, this is a lot of work to start up even a small business from scratch. But initially, the brainstorming and planning shouldn't cost you a whole lot of money, just your time and the rest of the expenses you can deal with in stages. There is of course much more to actually running a business and I'll discuss that in another video. Finally, Finally, it's worth noting that 2020 was a tough year for small businesses and the pandemic forced many to close their doors. However, these businesses were in the personal services sector and many will come back once the economy gets going again. Other businesses, however, grew and thrived during the same time frame. Online services, education and retraining, for example, were quite big business as millions of people were stuck at home with lots of time on their hands and an uncertain economic future ahead. My financial education business for example, did better during the pandemic than before it, as did the business of many educational YouTube channels. Remember, you're filling a need and
and providing value. And if society's needs change due to some unforeseen event, some businesses will succeed due to them being able to adjust and fill this new need. If you have a business idea, do not be afraid. Put yourself out there and believe in what you're doing. Remember that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So go ahead and take that chance. You just may succeed. I wish every entrepreneur the best of luck in 2021. Okay, so those were the essentials of starting up a small business. As always, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Let me know in the comments below what topics you would like to see me cover more of. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.